everyone, Katie here. I'm about to leave on an international trip, so I thought it would be cool to take a look at what my travel art supplies bag looks like, especially for a long trip where I have to keep things small and contained as possible. So let's see what I'm gonna bring. Let's start with the watercolor sketchbook. So I'm going to pack four watercolors and a small sketchbook for uh, just sketching for dry media. But for the watercolor, I wanted to get something that was small, but really good quality and not too thick. A lot of uh, sketchbooks, they tend to be really thick and I needed to pack as lightweight as possible, but something that I could have a lot of use out of and that had paper that wasn't gonna buckle on me or anything like that. So I got on Twitter and I was recommended this brand, which is a first for me, but so far I'm very impressed. It's by Stillman and Burn. I picked the extra heavyweight ivory color paper, which is not a color, sorry, it's blown out there. It's not a color I generally get for watercolor, but since I am going to be bringing some white um, paint and pens with me, I think this is going to look really, uh, have a lot of versatility and the white paint will look really nice on top of the paper for those extra highlights and such. So uh, eight and a half by five and a half is what this size is, which is perfect and you will see why. I already opened it. I'll show you. I wanted to uh, personalize it so I took one of my little vinyl stickers here and I slapped that on there and then my information on the inside cover. So there is the first piece. Let's take a look at the next one. So I have plenty of sketchbooks already and I could have grabbed any number of them. Normally I would bring one of the, these guys, the tone tan paper sketchbooks, uh, ring style so I can flip it over. They're usually a little bit thicker, um, but I wanted something again that was as small as I could possibly get because I have to travel extremely light for this. So I went to Michael's and I found this small floppy sketchbook there and you can see it's very thin especially compared to the other one that I just had here. I'll compare the two. So it's decently thinner than the other one but when you compare it with the size of the rings you can tell that a lot of the bulk is removed in this style of sketchbook because it's just sewn together rather than with the uh, spiral binding. Um, I don't even know, to be honest, if this sketchbook is acid-free or anything, but honestly, I think for the purpose of this, I'm not planning on making any masterpieces inside of this. It's just so that I've got something to sketch in, to doodle in, to take notes when I go to a museum or something like that, and that's what this is going to be for. Uh, however, these were basically cheap, basic artist sketchbooks. They're not pro- uh, sketchbooks at all, but the paper feels really nice and I think I will get all the use out of this that I could possibly need and it's just about the same size as the watercolor sketchbook, so good for travel again. Now, let's take a look at the watercolor portion of this. This is my palette, as you can tell. It is very, very well loved at this point. I've had this for a couple Oh gosh, hardly over a year, a couple years. This is actually my full size palette. I don't have a different palette used for traveling. This is everything here. So even in my studio, I'm painting directly out of this. But it has more than enough colors that I need. Um, these are mostly Daniel Smith. There's a few colors that are duplicates. So what I think I'm going to do is take out the duplicates because I'm only going to be on my trip for two and a half weeks, so I'm really not going to need this much paint with me. I'm probably going to put a few other colors in there. The ones on this side are specialty colors, so these are colors that you literally just you can't mix from any of these here. They're mica uh, watercolor, the duochrome, the specialty ones where it'll be one color when you paint it and then there'll be another shiny color on top of that, so I do like to include those just for a little extra pop on some of the watercolors that I do. And there's plenty of room for brushes here, so I'll 
put that there and I'll show you what brushes I'm going to bring. And I am recording this just as I do it, so it's not going to be a fancy video or anything, so hopefully it uh, blends together well. And I'm not making too much noise in the mic. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So I pulled out just these brushes. Um, most of my paintings, I can get away with using these two brushes here. Right there. 99% uh, of my work I can use with these. I like to have the extra ones because sometimes I'll use one of the other ones for just watercolor and one for just water so that I can do a little bit of watercolor and then pure water to blend it out and then I'll go back and forth, something like that. So these here, the rounds, this is what I use for most of my paintings. I pretty much do all of my work with these brushes and I feel like these are the most versatile and basic brushes that you could possibly get. So obviously I'm going to have my rounds here. I believe this might be, so it says zero, zero. It's a different brand here, but it's, it's kind of like a number 10, number eight, number six round and a number one round. So plenty for blending all of the basic work and then a detail brush. And then I grabbed a couple of these. These are very soft mop brushes. So these will be good for blending for applying watercolor over a large area. So like sky or, you know, something like that. And all of these, which is very important, will fit right inside of my palette. I'll have to redo this. This won't be accurate once I get all the paint moved around, but go. There's all my watercolors and the brushes inside. Next up, I wasn't sure about whether I wanted to bring these and I still might not bring these just because it does add a little bit of bulk. I might actually, looking at this, I might just pop a couple of these out because they don't really have to be in this and I might put them into like a little bag or something like that to kind of just cut down on the size but probably bring the silver and maybe like these two right here would be all I could ever need, especially for traveling. All right, uh, titanium white golden. It's just heavy body acrylic paint. This will be for adding waves. I like to add texture with this paint. So adding waves, highlights, ultra bright spots of white. And this will look really well on that, that cream paper that I got in the watercolor sketchbook. Um, and of course, some paper towel. One of these little jars here with a rubber seal. That way I can put a little bit of water in here. So when I'm on the plane, it's going to be a long plane flight. I can have some water in here and just, if I need to get up real quick, I just close the lid and throw it in my bag or throw it on the seat or something and not worry about getting water all over the place. And I may pare this selection down, but so far I've pulled out these drawing utensils. I've got a sketching pencil, and this is just a Prismacolor, they call it a turquoise pencil, but it's just regular graphite uh, in H, which means it's a hard uh, light colored pencil. So not good for shading, but good for laying down just kind of general outlines before I paint with watercolor. course my trusty Bic mechanical pencils. Not artist pencils, but honestly they're fantastic for sketching. So a couple of those filled with lead, a white Signo Uniball gel pen for highlights. I always like to have a black and a white colored pencil for a little bit of extra dark shading and extra light shading if needed. Although, yeah, I'll bring them anyways. I'm still deciding as you can tell. <laughs> uh, I do have a few ink pens here. So I've got a small size. So there's the small, pretty small, Faber-Castell pen in brown. 
That's the only colored one I have because it just tends to fit with the art that I do. Small, extra small, teeny tiny. And then I've got a dark gray here, a slightly lighter gray. And then this is just a big fat one. I think I got this at a convention for free. It was just like on my table when I got there. So I was like, all right, cool. And then a regular pen. I usually have to have one of these available because I always get a form at some point that I've got to fill out. And I'm like, well, I don't want to use my like art pens to fill out a form. So I always have a regular pen on hand. And sometimes these are fun to sketch with and shade with too. So why not? All right, almost done. Got to be able to sharpen those pencils somehow, so this is my very favorite sharpener, and it has never let me down. I think I've got four of these now. Small. <laughs> I love the hearts. I think I've had this since grade school. Very small ruler, just if needed. And an eraser. I think it's just like a Mars eraser or something like that. I can't even read it anymore. Here we go. And all of that will go into one of these canvas bags and I sell these on my website uh, not really a promo a promo if you want to use one of these bags but I've been using this for a few years and it's always good to test my own products so I've been using this as my travel bag and now I will put everything in here I might keep outside of the bag just because it's not quite fitting in there very snugly. There's enough space in there for the paint, but not quite enough for the, the jar, so I'm going to leave that out for now. for a long trip and that'll be very easy to just toss in my bag and be on the go. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the items or supplies that you saw in here, feel free to pop them down below. I am getting on a plane pretty much just a day or two right after I post this, so if I don't respond, that'll be why. Uh, I hope you guys found this useful and I will see you um, in the next video. <laughs> Bye!